Cool. So what I'm going to show you today is how big Saturn is compared to the Moon. So one of the nice things about the Moon um, is it's different basically every time you look at it. Uh, and the terrible thing about living on Earth, of course, is uh, you're under an atmosphere. And that atmosphere can shimmer like an absolute son of a bitch. This is kind of cute at the moment. We've sort of got a gremlin face here at the moment. Um, you know, mouth, nose, two eyes. Um, you see, the moon, with, with different shadows, it can change how it looks really quite a lot. Anyway, so I'm just, I'm just going to go around the edge of the moon um, just to give you an idea of... of uh, this is actually the moon, as it turns out, um, almost as bad as it gets in terms of atmospheric observing. But also, when the moon is full, you get the the least relief on the shadows on the craters. Uh, although some of them are on the Terminator are still absolutely awesome here. But the shimmer on the atmosphere is a nightmare. Quite fun up near the in the pole. Only the atmosphere would be still for a moment. Anyway, if we go down the middle, you'll see this is that there, there's absolutely no shadows on the craters at all here, and it's really quite hard to see anything. Um, uh, is that Tycho? That's uh, Tycho. Uh, so we actually change the gain or the exposure or something. Uh, let's keep that about 20 for a second. Let's turn the game down a bit. Yeah, okay. Uh, when it's got good shadows on it, it's absolutely awesome. Um, and this is the other limb of the moon. So, uh, you'll quite often see that it's, it's got um, it, it's got a very uneven rim to it. The police out tonight. Okay, and as we get around, eventually we'll get back to where we're going to get some shadows. Which is on this side. Ah, oh, look at that! That gorgeous. So you get some wonderful contrasty craters. Oh, it's just filled up with lava. Oh, all right. And at the far limb of the moon. It's a little rill there or something. Maybe mountains, I want to say. <laughs> the seeing is so bad and you can imagine what it's like when it's rock steady seeing but you know it, this is just one of the things of astronomy you're, you're at the mercy of the atmosphere you have the best telescope in the world but he's not going to help you if your uh, atmosphere is kind of like this anyway so um, I'm going to go over to Tycho again because uh, you know, Tycho is this big ray crater uh, very prominent on on the moon. All these rays come out of Tycho. Very striking in a wide field shot. So that's the size of Tycho. Okay. So now Saturn, by happy chance, is about three degrees away from the moon tonight. So I'm actually going to undo the axis. I think. So I can, I'm just going to scroll the telescope over, otherwise, pan up. Oh, crap. I didn't lose the focus. One of the nice things about the moon is it's quite easy to focus on. God, it shimmers a lot, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to call that focus. Uh, 
It's kind of difficult when the atmosphere is this unsteady. Anyway. There he is! Hey! So that's Saturn on exactly the same scale as the Moon. And you see how critical it is to have a stable atmosphere. And this is... Uh, it's not unusable, but... Um, you know, yeah. Got to work with what you got. So, um, you got Saturn here. Let's move him over to the other side of the field. And if I remember rightly, oh, we've got Titan here somewhere. So if I turn up the exposure, I'll burn out Saturn, of course. There he is, there's Titan. So there is actually a man made. There's actually a point source, it's just. Um, I've got a nine second exposure on this. That's that's crazy. That's that's oh you see other moons. More moons. Um and lots of dead pixels. Wow. Yeah, okay, this needs uh needs some care anyway. So the nice thing about uh Titan there is Titan's actually got a man made probe on it. Let's see if I can focus that a bit better. Ah, I think it's a lost cause with this atmosphere. A oh, lost cause. That's maybe better. Okay, so there's Saturn. I'm not. Um, the, the, that's Titan, and that's got the Huygens lander on it. And if I turn up, let's, let's jack up the exposure even more. Let's see how many more moons we can find. There's at least two more. Uh, you can usually see quite a lot of moons on um, Saturn. With Jupiter, there are four really bright moons. Uh, but the downside is, of course, that there's four bright ones and then a gazillion really really faint ones hey uh, you can see another one right on the uh it's not a moon it's there so saturn's got a huge amount um and also another thing right with saturn uh as it goes around the sun there are times when the rings are really good, which is about now. Actually, that's beautiful. You see the see the division between the two main ring systems. So there's uh, an alpha and a beta ring, and there's a gap between them called the Cassini division, which in the still moment I reckon you can actually see there. Um, but. You know, yeah, easily. You easily see the Cassini division. Um, but at the moment, oh, God. Um, with a nice still atmosphere, um, this would be much, much better. But anyway, so that gives you a nice idea of the size of Saturn uh, versus the size of the moon. So there's one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that's just how quickly, at the moment, this is on a polar line German equatorial mount, um, which is actually driven to counter the Earth's rotation and keep the telescope pointing at a fixed point in space, which in this case is Saturn. However, I can actually turn off the tracking, right? So when I turn off the tracking, the Earth's going to continue rotating, which means the telescope's going to start scrolling around. So this is what happens if your if your scope isn't driven. So I'm turning off the tracking. Three, two, one, now. So that what you're looking at there is the rotation of the Earth. Uh, so you see things drift out of the field 
at quite a rate. Uh, okay, let's bring on the tracking and turning on the tracking. Uh, so the, the the tracking mounts are a mixed blessing. Uh, you've got two basic sorts. You've got the German Equatorial, which is what it's based on, which is what this telescope's on at the moment. That just drives on one axis. Um, there, just set them up. You basically got to point them due north and get one of the axes pointing parallel to the Earth's axis. Uh, to crudely align them, you can do it in seconds. To, to align it such that it's tracking like this, it'll take you 15, 20 minutes, that sort of thing. Well, then you've got the go-to mounts where they're all tasking with mounts, but you've got to uh, point the telescope with at least three bright stars or two bright stars before you start. Well, can't do that during the day, obviously. Um, and yeah, they, uh, they, they can, they're okay in some ways, not so okay in others. Uh, me, I got into astronomy through Dobsonians, which uh, they're basically large Newtonian telescopes on a very simple Altazimuth mount. And uh, they're fantastic uh, light buckets. So you get lots of light gathering for deep sky objects, lots of resolution for things like planets. Um, but they're not driven, which, you know, practical practically means that, turn it off again, you've got to counter that uh, all the time with your telescope. So, you know, I, I would, I, I could do it with this just to on, on driving the axes, but you can see it, it it's actually a sort of fair, fair job just to actually keep the telescope pointing in the right direction. Now, you get used to it fairly quickly. Um, you know, count, you, you know which way the Earth's rotating. You've got to get it over here somewhere, then you let it drift through the field of view. You get a nice view of it, then you bring it back again, and so it keeps going. Um, it's more of a pain in the ass with um, small objects like planets. Uh, this is a tiny field of view, right? So it's really conspicuous at the moment. You get a nice wide uh, field eyepiece and look at a deep sky object it, it's really not that big of a deal um so anyway yeah just some quick thoughts on astronomy and a nice little look at saturn and some of its moons so hope you enjoyed that